Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Valero Community Meeting slash open discussion. Today is July 27th, 2021. And uh, per usual, we're going to go through some status updates and then have discussion topics and uh, last but not least, do some shout outs as well. So um, with that, we uh, we're going to start off with uh, Dave. Sure. What did I what, what lies did I write there? Um, so Bridget and I merged the uh, the CRD changes today. Bridget did most of the work, so that's reviewed. That's in. Um, I'll let her go into that. But uh, one of the things she identified was that uninstall needs to be updated as well to work with the new CRDs. So I'm working on that and uh, banging my head against the wall. Um, I've been working on getting the item snapshot or plugin together. This is a new plugin, um, and we can go over that um, in the discussion topics. I have some uh, questions there for, for people. And I'm on community support this week. Yay. Awesome. Any, yeah, any questions or comments for Dave? All right. Um, next up, we have Daniel. Yeah, I just want to thank Scott for the review on my PR. And uh, yeah, it's merged, and I'm currently working on the implementation. I was the uh, 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 community uh, uh, supporter uh, last week, and um, nothing really fun. Just a bunch of regular issues and, uh, we have handled. That's, that's my part. Cool. Um Question for you, uh, during the community support, so this goes out to uh, yeah, everyone who's doing community support right now. Um, if there are any specific issues that you find during the week, do you wanna bring them to the community meeting to discuss as well? Uh, would that be uh, worthwhile? Uh, no, not really. I, I had some discussion with Bridget and Dave uh, yesterday and um, and nothing really worth mentioning for now. I, I mean, if we come up with something good, you know, like, hey, yeah. let's add this mm. feature, we'll bring it. But yeah, mostly it's, you know, why doesn't this work? Make this work. Okay. Ba ba basic support most of the time, I guess. Yep. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, if something interesting arises, then we'll bring it to the community. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, all right. Thank you, Daniel. Any questions, comments for Daniel around the uh, Valero debug design? Um, you said you're working on the implementation. Do you have a, a, a rough timeline of the implementation there, Daniel? I think it can be ready uh, before the mid August because you know, uh, in when we are in our BU, we will take the first week off. So uh, hopefully by the mid October, things will be ready. Uh, August, sorry, mid okay. August, things will be ready. It has some dependency on Crash D. I have talked to the maintainer of Crash D and they, they accepted my proposal to make enhancement so that it will be more uh, easily for the integration, but they don't have a hard timeline. So we need to double check in August. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, next up, we got Bridget. Hi everyone. Um... So this week we got out um, V1.2.1 releases of the AWS Azure and GCP plugins. Um, these include the same security fixes um, that were fixed in Valero 162. Um, I just realized I, I still have uh, a little bit of work to do there in, uh, to update the, our documentation to reference those new images, um, but they are there and they're available to use. Um, I spent some time last week uh, working with Fong on the plugin versioning. Um, huge thanks to him for, for pushing that work forward. Um, so I, I, he did mention he's going to be uh, taking some leaves and so I think I'll try and pick up some of that work um, while he's out. So again, thank you for that. Um, yeah, also, um, as Dave mentioned, we'll be working towards the V163 release um, this week with the CRD fixes. Also, huge thanks to, to Genting for, for making sure that we will get that work done um, so that, um, yeah, as Dave mentioned, got merged uh, earlier today. Um, and then I think this week we'll be doing some testing and getting that ready. 
Um, I think that's it for me. Actually, I have a question for Dave yeah. because I, I saw that uh, you mentioned you're working on 163 uninstall for CRDs. And uh, in parallel, Wenkai, and Wenkai has been trying to run the automation end-to-end -end test manually on different versions of Kubernetes. So uh, will that impact these uh, automation tests or we can ignore this part of work and just test the current code and uh, declare a success if it passed all the test cases? I think we're gonna need that because um, I think, because Bridget already tried it and the end-to-end -end tests are failing, right? Because the uninstall is not working. Yeah, so the, the, the issue is, is that if you uh -huh. try to run Valero uninstall on a 122 cluster, it's still attempting to use the V1 beta 1 API, um, which doesn't exist in the 122 cluster. Um, so I think everything else is fine and all the testing should work um, for everything 121 and earlier. But I think it's just on 122. Um, but I think if we can still work to get all that automation and everything in place, and then once um, Dave's fix is in, then those tests are ready. I think that will be great. So um, okay, so I don't so, think, so I think we will. Work. Um, Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> so I, I'm a little curious. So so I I think we will need to wait for the change uh, of, from Dave uh, being merged before we. Uh, can have a successful end to end, right? Yeah, I think the tests will fail on 122, but I think as long yeah. as we, like, if you're working towards getting the automation and stuff in place and, and getting those tests. Yeah, I have one. Uh... It should work with 121. I haven't tried it yet. Mm -hmm. I tried it with 122 and it failed. Um, so it should yeah, work I with 121. Finished. Yeah. Now I have finished the test on 150. Uh... 15, but uh, and it passed, and I have not started the test for 122. Yeah, 115 will definitely work. 122 will definitely fail, and then like 121 okay. should work. You think, Bridget? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I was, I was going to say when I was testing the PR a few weeks ago, I tested with 121, and it worked fine. With um... Yeah, so uh, Bridget did a uh, kind image for 122 that we're using for testing, and there's some details in the Slack, but that's that's where we're at right now because we're using the RC build. Yeah, I pushed a Docker, but I'll put a link to it in the. I, I realized it was on the internal channel, but I'll put it in our Valero Dev channel as well if anyone wants to use it. It's just built just using kind build node image against the RC tag. Just FYI, you need kind 111. Kind 110 does not work. Mm, yes. Kind's quite picky about its image or its versions. Is that something that we want to update um, the uh, contributing guides with? Make sure that we have proper kind uh, versioning and things like that as well when we run tests like that? Uh, I think so. I think. Um, so the reason why I think it won't work at the minute is because I built that image using a very specific version of Kind. But I think whenever you're um, running Kind and its release notes tells you for the version that you're using which image to pull, um, and it will kind of do it all. It'll pull yeah, the it, latest one for yeah, you like automatically. It, it actually, it, it Kind one ten doesn't work for one twenty one or one twenty two. So I tried it with right. your image, it failed. And then I tried 121 and it also failed. And I, geez, what have I broken? And then I went back to like 119, which I was using before. I was like, oh, no problem. So, and then the yeah. updated work. But I'll take a look at the um, other contribution docs to see, because maybe we're like pointing people to a specific version of kind that's not going to work. So um, yes, yeah, so we're taking a look. Okay, awesome. Any other um, questions, comments around this one and uh, around Bridget's update? All right, uh, Wenkai. Okay, uh, for PR checking, I have created a, a pull request and got merged that uh, currently we only run the basic test cases for the pull request and the four test, uh, test cases we've covered 
by our regular end-to-end -end test. Yeah, this is the first item. And the second item, I'm still working on the regular end-to-end -end testing. And uh, uh, all test cases have passed on vSphere uh, with some uh, patches. And I will uh, submit several PR to the upstream to uh, include uh, this patch. And uh, I will uh, start to working on uh, running test cases on uh, AWS. And uh, hopefully we can finish the, uh, that part uh, within one or two weeks. Awesome, that sounds great. Any uh, questions, comments for Wenkai? All right. Um, uh, Scott and Jen Ting, um, just quick question. If you have any status updates that you would like to share. No from my side. Be okay. All right. Let's dive into some discussion topics. Um, Dave, you got two topics here, and then Fong, you got a third. So let's dive into the first one, Dave. Yeah, so um, we have just been, you know, as we get PRs and stuff, um, some are little ones and you like look at them and you go, yeah, I, I know what that is. But we've been getting, you know, some PRs where it's like, oh, let's change this functionality. Or let's add this thing. And we haven't really gone through like a design review. And then we wind up with like, you know, back and forth during the PR, you know, where you have to like figure out what the code's doing and then figure out if it's a good idea that's doing what it's doing. So um, Daniel said that, you know, on Harbor, they, um, they simply ask people, you know, to put in a proposal. And I think that's something that I'd like to add to our flow and just say, you know, if it's above this certain complexity, we're gonna ask you to put in a proposal or a design doc, you know, depending on how big it is. But, um, you know, just, just have these things come in early on so we can discuss whether it's this is the direction we want to go in before we're actually at the point of looking at the code and trying to figure out what the code does. Um, how's that sound for everybody? Yeah, I personally think we, it sounds great. And I personally think maybe we should do it a, a little differently from Harbor because in Harbor, there is a, another repo that people need to push the proposal. Um, which as the, uh, uh, you know, make things a little complicated because we need to check different repos. Um, I think for Valero, probably uh, we just follow the design uh, workflow. We just ask people to, you know, write a PR uh, into the design folder, uh, add a markdown file to describe what they're gonna do. And once it's accepted, they can start working on it or in parallel, but, but the design should go in first. What do you guys yeah. think? Yeah, and I was going to ask, just you know, kind of curious how this is different than what we were already doing with the just because because we, we're already creating design PRs for kind of more substantial changes and getting those approved. So I'm wondering what the changes are, differences are here. No real difference because this group is usually good, but we get like random stuff, yeah. and you know they're like drive bys, and it's like, hey, we've never talked to anybody here about anything, but we made a bunch of changes to the code, and here, why aren't why aren't you adding these right away? So I want to encourage people to be, you know, if they're if they're thinking about making big changes, that they should be, you know, involved, run them past the the community, and you know that there's no surprises for everybody. And when it comes time to review them, we aren't trying to figure out whether or not the actual change is a good idea, but we're just looking at whether or not the code does it correctly. Yeah, I think maybe for some of the changes, even some of them maybe don't even necessarily have like a, an issue associated with them. And I think even that would be like a start. It's like, here's an issue where I've talked about what I'd like to do. It doesn't necessarily have to go through like a review process or I'm not sure. Like maybe, maybe we want to have like a slightly lighter weight process for smaller requests rather. Cause I, sometimes the design dog could feel like quite, quite substantial and quite a lot of effort um, needs to go into it. And maybe that's not necessary for all changes, but even maybe just like having an issue using like the, we have like a feature request um, like format and even that might be like a, a good start. I don't know. 
Yeah, I think we can do, I mean, we, we don't want to have like a heavyweight pro process, but you know, we just, I think we just document that you should do this. And then that gives the reviewer a chance to like push back and say, hey, I don't understand why you're doing this. Let's do a proposal at least for this, you know, or if they, if they didn't. And if they did, then, you know, we can move it on through that way. I think, um, Jonas, can I share the screen? Can I share screen? Because I've got the, uh, the harbor wording up here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, do we need to change any, um, um, any small parts of the documentation, I'm guessing? Probably, probably the documentation. So um, Harbor just says here, you know, PR is always welcome. Uh, you know, it says break them down into small changes, which, you know, we don't really say. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's assumed, but it doesn't hurt. And uh, actually, where is the proposal part? Um, oh yeah, if it were, if there will be a significant effort, please document it as an issue and get a discussion going before starting to work on it. So something along that line. So we're not gonna get terribly formal, just, we just have something there that we can push back with a little bit. So I'll go ahead and I'll, yeah, I'll go ahead, I'll write something up and then we'll put it in as a PR and um, we can all review it. In our uh, start contributing documentation, we do uh, uh, say create a having a high level design document as uh, like the number one. So if you, if you scroll down and you go to start contributing under contribute, I'm not sure on the left. Yeah, start contributing. We already have creating a design doc. Yeah, so maybe we just start pushing back on this a bit. Yeah, I think just uh, fleshing that out a bit, like why and when a design doc is needed. Um, smaller PR, not needed. Substantial effort, needed. Yeah, or you know, like changes in functionality. Flag, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah, so basically just a little pushback, you know, so that we are able to, con you know, I, I, I feel like, we get hit with some stuff that's just like, why aren't you merging this? It's like, well, I don't think it's a good idea. And it's like, we don't have a, you know, we're not really in, in the process of discussing the idea, or maybe I don't even understand the code. I'm like trying to review the code. I'm like, why are we doing this? So anyway, so that, that's what I'd like to do. So I'll, I'll make some changes here and we'll review it and we'll toss it in. Um, so moving right along. So my other topic was the uh, item snapshotter. So this is the API I'm working on. And so this is from the upload progress monitoring. And um, this is essentially, it's like volume snapshotter and moving towards backup item action. So right now volume snapshotter handles snapshot, create from snapshot and delete. Uh, backup item action does backup item action. There's also restore item action and delete item action. And so looking forward, we wanna be able to to work at the um, Kubernetes level. So that's what this will do. And it makes sense, I think, to pull these three different types of things together here. So backup item action, restore item action, and delete item action are not going away. So those will remain as the things for when you're like modifying Kubernetes resources. But if you're doing something that takes like an external snapshot outside of Valero, item snapshot is gonna be the way to go. So volume snapshot will merge into this and the existing, um, so the CSI plugin and the vSphere plugin are both using backup item action and actually doing snapshots. So those two will, will move, move over to become item snapshot or plugins. Um, any case, so right now, so for snapshot item, as we originally planned in um, the upload progress, we're able to do a snapshot and then the plugin can be doing work in the background, such as uploading or whatever it is. Um, and we'll come back and monitor that afterwards. One of the requests I got recently was on restore, we pretty much do each volume, each PV serially, and you know, it's gonna be each item. So um, I wanted to kick around the idea of adding progress on restore and possibly even progress on, um, so progress would really be on create, create item, 
from Snapshot and also possibly progress on deletes. We could farm the deletes out faster. Um, any thoughts, you know, why that's a horrible idea, why it's a great idea? So um, I'm thinking that if we do this, what we're going to need to do is we'll have to have like Nolan's manifest. So on the restore, um, it's going to have to go like, like, for example, like a pod with five PVs attached to it. We'll probably have to wait until all the PVs are present before starting the pod. So we'll have to be able to keep track of what depends on what before actually doing it, I think. Um, volume populator would, would work for some of the things like uh, uh, straight up volumes, but then we probably don't need to monitor it so much either because volume populator should guarantee that it'll work. Okay, well, I'm not hearing well, any I have strong a question. Okay. Sorry, and maybe yeah. you said this and I missed it. So is this something that this is, of course, for the future, right? It's not something yeah. that you're adding on for 1.7. It's like you're saying we even would have to do the manifest work and then you would do this after it's like looking ahead. Yes, and I may put that into the API and just not use it yet. So design the API okay. out and have it available. And then we don't have to do yet another API revision. <laughs> gotcha. So basically, you're trying to if we're going to do it, you'll do a few tweaks now. And that's why you're asking. Yeah, and just you know, getting a general sense of you know, ideas. So um, if anybody thinks of anything, hit us up. You know, email, Slack, whatever, and um, we will have this in for review soon. So yeah. is it consistent with the design? And I was not involved in the early design. In the early design, um, that part, the the restore and delete snapshot was not part of the original design. So I'm going to upgrade the design doc with where this is today, and then we can go ahead and uh, merge, you know, review and merge that first. Yeah, so that's it for me. So we can move on to the versioning. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. Uh, next up, uh, Fong. Yeah, so I just want to give a quick update on the versioning. A uh, plugin versioning that um, I provide a link there uh, that uh, Bridget helped create the design, and uh, we have some feedback. I have I based based on feedback from uh, I think from Scott. I uh, also incorporate that and then uh, into a, an implementation uh, to try to figure out if. If this uh, design actually works or makes sense, and so I, I create a, an implementation, uh, and I also put a link on in, on the document um, so that we can uh, whoever can want to help with the implementation can can start playing with the uh, with the code. Uh, I uh, I try to follow uh, the design as close as possible uh, to see. Uh, if the design actually uh, makes sense, and and, and we uh, I did some uh, I think I worked with Bridget uh, on Slack to um, point out some of the detail that can be changed to make it more uh, efficient uh, and uh, cleaner code. Uh, I think I also um, incorporate the feedback from Scott to make sure that uh, in the future if we adding more versioning. The code will, uh, you know, spell uh, Roman will, will be updated gracefully. So uh, now, in the next uh, this week and next week, I I will be uh, on vacation next week, so I will not work on it. So I'm asking the you know community whoever wants to uh, jump in and help with this uh, effort, please uh, uh, contact uh, Bridget and, and Scott and me to uh, start jumping in. Uh, I am, my next point I want to talk about is, is how to test this um, this this versioning, right? So I, I, I right now I have very uh, I still have very uh, vague idea about what to test and exactly how we can test because uh, the code chain that I make is uh, is in a lot of places. Uh, it's a little bit here and there, a little bit here, not change, it does not change a lot, but it's a little bit here and there. 
and then uh, like for example we, we, we just change the uh, using version one to version two uh, variable I mean interface in a bunch of interface and, and that change it so uh, how do we test it to make sure it doesn't break the version one so on and so forth uh, and I also have an idea of uh, maybe I have to implement like a, a test version of version two so that we can test out the, the plugin version two to make sure the version two also works and uh, <clears throat> whatever we want to uh, achieve with that uh, also works. So I, I want to uh, bring it out here to see uh, if you guys have any idea uh, on how to help testing this uh, plugin version. That's it, I want to listen to now. Yes, I think there's there's a few different ways. I think that um, we can try and get this tested. Um, so Dave, I know you'd mentioned like this week with doing the, the IM snapshot or changes that um, you've been like taking advantage of like the tilt to get the other plugins to build with the changes incorporated. Um, I think, what, so that's like, I think something that I find useful when doing local development, um, but not necessarily testing. Um, I think another gap in like our end-to-end -end testing, for example, is that um, we're currently hard coding the images to you. So maybe that's something that we should be making configurable so that you could make a plugin like a like make a variation on like the AWS plugin, for example, with the new API changes, and then you could run the end to end tests with a version before and a version after to like try both combinations. So I think if we've done the like the the adaptation layer right, then you should be able to run like a V1 plugin with a Valero that's using like the V2 API. Um, so that's, that's some ideas. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be tricky. It's probably some of the most like awkward code that I've had to work it with in Valero. So um, it'll take some thought. Um, yeah, it's definitely awkward. I just you know just adding a new plugin type was like how many different places do I have to go and make changes. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, because the version two also affects all types of uh, plugin type. So object store, you know, backup items, action. So, so all of them have to be tested to make sure that I do not break them. And uh, to be to be honest, I, I'm not familiar with many of them. <laughs> so far, I only use uh, vSphere plugin. <laughs> Yeah, so well, that's, we, uh, the, that, that's the craziest one. So yeah, um, I was just gonna say, like, obviously, like, we'll help out, like, with the testing. Like, it's not going to be entirely like your responsibility, of course not. Um, but I was just thinking, like, with your branch, if you're going to be on vacation, I was wondering, like, would it make sense for us to have this as like a feature branch on the Valero repo, and that way, then we can have like it's easier for us to like have um, contributions from other people like during that time. Um, I, I, think, uh, I, I think that's a good idea because right now I'm just using my private branch mm -hmm. to just you know, try it out. Yep. Uh, I don't think that's the way we should deliver the item, right? <laughs> so so uh, maybe, uh, maybe Bridget, could you uh, like uh, create a branch and I, would, yep. I can start merging my, my chain there and then we can uh, continue working from there. Uh, that would be maybe become like a formal uh, way for other people to start contributing. Yeah, yeah I was I thinking that, that might be easier. Um, great. Um, I'll I'll create a branch and then like you can make a PR um, against it and we'll get those changes in there. Thank you um, again for for working on this and um, it was very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah on, on top of that, I, I don't think this one we will make it for one dot seven because <laughs> it's just a lot of shame and a lot of things we want to test to make sure it's not breaking. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna make it to one point seven. Let's just let's leave it on the feature brand for now, and when we go to a point where we have a very stable um, 
then we can say whether we should merge it into 1.7 or maybe the next release. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, I think as well, maybe with them, um, uh, if we have a feature branch as well, um, we can probably set up um, some of the, the test automation and things like that against it, um, given that we have like the more of the infrastructure like hooked up to the, the main Valera repo. So um, we can take advantage of that. Uh, so uh, just one double check with Eleanor. So is it okay? I assume it's okay if the plugin versioning uh, slip out of 1.7? I think so. I mean, it obviously we'd love to have it, but at the same time, we do have other priorities too. And um, yeah, I know that especially Bridget has a lot of asks on her. So I think that, yeah, I mean, my my, my understanding is that it really depends on where the plugin versioning asks are coming from. My understanding is it's generally been the community and I think folks here. So, yeah. Dave, is the work that you're doing for the um, new APIs for the IAM snapshot, does it depend on the plugin versioning? I feel like you said that it did. No, because it's all, no, it, it doesn't. Um, I think we'd like to have it be part of the plugin versioning. Mm -hmm. So we should fit in with whatever, with whatever scheme, but it's like a whole new plugin. So. Yeah. It's not I actually just, dependent on it. Right. I just wasn't sure if you were going to be making changes like backup item action and volume snapshot as a consequence of this. Hopefully not. Hopefully okay. not. I have a question. Um, a very naive question. Of course, we're working very hard. Right now, we are only going to three releases a year for Valero because um, it is it was just such a long release process. We had a lot of manual testing. As our team is now working uh, hard to make it much more automated and we want our release process much more automated, could we consider doing once a month releases, say? I mean, if, if it's painless, no, 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 I saw that look, Dave. Only if it's pain, I guess my question is if we remove the pain and the time of the release, because I just hate this idea that if we don't get plug-in versioning in, like I just think so it would take another like four months to get into the next release. Wouldn't it be great if we released once a month if it was painless? So tell me why I'm wrong. I'm happy to be told why I'm wrong. I just wanted to ask. I, I think the difficulty I have with it is that we do have a lot of big ticket items coming, you know, architectural changes, and those are going to take more than a month to finish. And so we're going to wind up with these like feature branches that are kind of long lived. Good point, good point. So, good point. I, I, so I think we might mature to that someday or, you know, where we have like point, because essentially we're doing that, right? So we're doing, we're doing like weekly releases. We got 162 and 163 are going out. So um, I think for the versioning, you know, the big push for that is so that we can do the timeouts on the plugins. And we can do both of those in one aid if necessary, because once the versioning's in, we can take advantage of it. So we could pull both of those features into one aid. That's okay. my thought. That makes sense to me what you're saying. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, does anyone have any other um, further discussion items that you want to bring up on today's call? Um, I don't know, do you want to talk about the release date? Because you mentioned that we may need, you know, help from other maintainers for the manual testing. Yes, that's a good point. Um, I'm trying to remember the very, I think that what do we decide? The 28th is what we're going to try or? There, I guess the point yeah. is, is that, okay. So tentatively, fellow, fellow, uh, Valero community members. Um, so we've been trying to figure out when exactly we'll release. We've been saying September but we've kept it vague for now. Um, and so when we, so let's see, tentatively, I don't know, can someone, I don't know if you wanna just even type in the dates, but so tentatively, I believe we're thinking September 28th. And then I believe that we were, what that means then is working backwards. We were gonna give ourselves, I think about 10 days for a release candidate two and working back from that, I think about a week for release candidate one, because my understanding is in past releases, we've had two um, release candidates. Um, there's good things and bad things about that date. On one hand, that's good. It means that I believe when was code freeze? Does anyone remember? I, I don't have the date. Uh, September 6th. 
Okay, so September 6th would be code freeze. And it makes me think I'm doing my math wrong because I'm not sure. If no, the six no we, we, we wound up with like a funny um, thing in there. Um, I can share the calendar. Yeah, can you just share the calendar? All yeah. that's to say, though, is that um, on one hand, of course, the longer we wait until code freeze, um, the more we have a chance of getting features in. Uh, so September 6th was kind of a compromise. It's a little early. Who, who knows? On the other hand, uh, starting October 1st, we learned that October 1st, so I think about October 7th, is a major holiday in China. So a number of our, our uh, Beijing team members will not be available. And because they are hoping, we're hoping that they're going to do much of the release, we want them around, obviously, to be able to do that. So we didn't want to go out much later. September 28th even is pushing it, assuming that we might have a couple issues after. And so I think one of our big issues for um, the community is whether you all can help a little bit with the manual testing we generally do for each release. Because if that's the case, then our release windows, our release candidates, we can just budget one week, say, as opposed to two weeks for each release candidate. So I've just basically, so I'll stop actually talking and maybe Dave, you can talk through the schedule. And then I'd love to hear if, if any of you especially can budget a little bit of time if we give you a, time, a warning in advance for testing. Yeah, so just schedule wise, um, we're here in late July um, and we're doing two week sprints internally. And so at the, uh, what is this? Um, August 9th, we would go into a feature freeze. And all that means is we're, we're not gonna add new things to the roadmap at this point. And, we're we're not going to add new things to the roadmap, but like if somebody shows up with a PR with like, hey, I want to add this big thing, it's like no. Um, we'll continue developing through September sixth, and then go into code freeze. At that point, it's going to be bug fixes only, and like you know, critical bug fixes. We'll cut an RC build here, and uh, run that through testing. Ideally, we don't need a second RC build, but if we do, we have room for it here and then releasing on the 28th. And, and so again, like in the past, and this is where of course, Dave and Bridget can speak much better to this than me, but I know that uh, for 1.6, for instance, there was a lot of manual testing. We are of course trying to move away from manual testing and we're setting up the framework for that for 1.7, but my understanding is we'll have to do nearly all, all of the manual testing that was done for 1.6 for 1.7. Can anyone, Fill me in. Will there be any manual testing that can be removed, or or is it all needed? Um, I think at this point, well, in one kind, Daniel can speak to this. It's like I, I think they're mainly focusing though on getting automation of the existing end-to-end -end tests mm -hmm. and getting that run against a larger matrix of platforms automatically. That'll actually give us a lot of confidence going into the beginning of the RC build um, because we spent a lot of time in the last um, test cycle just getting all of the environments. I mean, I spent like three days fighting with Feaster because I hadn't messed with it for a while. So I think that's gonna be a big plus, but we're still gonna have the existing set of manual steps that Bridget had pulled together for the last release. Yeah, I think like things that aren't currently covered by like our end to end tests are just like seen as our upgrade process work. So can you like take a backup with like, um, at the one seven point, it'll be like, could you take a backup with one six and then restore from it using one seven? Um, so just there are various cases like that, which maybe don't necessarily have to be platform specific. So it could just be, you know, run it on kind or whatever. It's not, we don't need everyone to like have like a, an AWS or like an Azure vSphere like environment set up. So it is stuff that can be done locally um, and more easily, but it's just some, some of these cases where um yeah it it adds up and they're just small bits and pieces here and there that um we could break up and divide up so i think our ask uh fellow community members is uh starting september 6th let's say for the 6th to the 13th roughly that week basically you don't have to answer now although if you have any thoughts we'd love to hear them but can you budget some time basically for this? Can you budget one day out of that week roughly to, to help us out? And if so, then we can know that we can assign you a certain amount of manual testing and it'll give us confidence in the schedule. Um, if you feel like you can't, we, we understand. I mean, we'd love for you to consider it, but um, we may have to adjust our schedule if we can't rely on any additional testing help. So thoughts now, or feel free to think about it and ping us later. Right. Thank you.
Uh, I see Genting had another meeting, so he had to leave. Um, all right. The last portion of this is, of course, uh, we're going to do shout outs to uh, the wonderful people who help build Valero. Uh, so the first one is from, um, I think you're, you're on the call here. Uh, is it Jai or Jay or how do you pronounce your name? Uh, thank you so much. That's Jay. Jay. Jay? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, you want to talk about your, your fix here? Uh, yeah, sure. So I was going through the multiple namespace uh, test and I just noticed there was a missing expect statement. And even though uh, I like put in values where I, I want to fail the test, but I mean, the test didn't fail. So I just checked it out further and I noticed that there's this expect tag missing. Something just to feel right. So Awesome. Thank you so much for this. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. Next up, we have... A, uh, a really cool one from um, uh, T, Nicole Williams. There we go. Um, she added, uh, replicated a company to the adopters page. So replicated uses Valero and, and they uh, put a, uh, a full statement here. Replicated uses the Valero open source project to enable snapshot and COTS to back up uh, Kubernetes manifest and persistent volumes. Um, so this also provides a detailed interface into their admin console to manage storage, storage destination schedule and perform and monitor the backup and restore process. Super cool to see. Uh, really, really happy uh, to have replicated as part of the adopters. Uh, the last one is from uh, Lars Leitonen, uh, a package restore uh, fixing a dropped error. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lars. And before you stop, I really have to give a big shout out. Budget left, but Genting for the CRD updates. That's huge. Yes, tons of those. I saw a lot of those come in as well. So really awesome to see. Uh, all right. So with that. Thank you everyone for uh, joining us tonight uh, or today or this morning. Um, have a wonderful rest of the week, everyone. And uh, next week, uh, we're gonna take uh, some time off because most of the team are gonna recuperate a bit and, and uh, hopefully relax a bit. Uh, so we're gonna take next week's uh, community meeting off and then we'll resume in two weeks. With that, have a fantastic week, everyone. See you soon. Bye. See you then. Bye everyone. Take care.